I had no idea that we had such a long press session the other, the other night. I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that. But what we were doing, we're actually, we were actually doing something that I used to do where we would pray in the spirit and then get quiet for the Lord and then come right back out and start praying again. We were doing that when I first got here. Right. Yeah, we, yeah, and I, I did. I did it for years, and it's like, it's like the Lord changed the shift of how things are being done. I generally, overall, don't pray as fervently as I used to in the sessions. Um, I think part of it could be because I'm dealing I'm dealing with um, less people in the room. Whereas this room used to be full, literally. We used to have sometimes 18, 20 people in here, even in, even into the other room. And, um, I, and I was focusing on getting these people to learn how to really pray hard in the Holy Ghost because that's what's wrong. People don't really pray. They say prayers. And there's a vast difference between that and real prayer. Real prayer, you feel it, literally, from your belly. You feel it throughout your body. Most people seldom get to that in prayer. Whether they pray in English or whether they pray in the Holy Ghost, they don't learn how really to pray because it takes that kind of prayer to break principalities and powers. But what happens again was what most folk do is they say a prayer. Most people, if you talk about like today, they probably said anywhere between four to six prayers if they went to a meeting this morning or this afternoon. But that's not much of a prayer because they're short. And so we're not talking about just 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 lightly making a petition. But in actuality, actually delving into the realm of the spirit and actually making a difference. And see, that's 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 the whole thing. Get people to understand that many, many times people in the church are skirting around the issue of uh, prayer and what real Christianity is about. That's, and see, that's why people get shocked when they meet me and I get to talk about this stuff because. They've grown up in formalism, and it's ritualistic. And when you get into rituals, you just don't have people that's just really putting time in prayer. But at the same time, no work is really being done. What good is it to gather 2,500 people, but you're not really touching the community? And I don't mean just through programs. See, that's, cause see, this is the mindset that people have. The New Testament said what? They said these men, these are the men who have done what? Turn the world upside down. And what happens is people have these strange notions. And see, people don't realize we got these notions in our head. And I, and I see, I make this appeal to everybody. I remind everybody, whether you're Catholic or Protestant, and uh, I, I love the way Jason said it so many weeks ago. He said it very eloquently about how people get all bent out of shape in their emotions. Um, your denomination did not save you. Uh, your church doctrine did not save you. Unless you submitted your life unto Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you ain't saved. You're just a church person. And you're just as lost as somebody who's out here pimping, selling drugs, getting drunk, cussing folk out, acting crazy. It's not because you attend church every week. It's not because you have church membership. It's not because that you usher or do other things in church. That does not save you. I remind you again, the late Kenneth Hagin Sr., when he went down to the bowels of hell as a young child, a young man, he was he didn't understand. He kept asking God, why, why am I going down here? I'm a member of the church. 
And God told him that's got nothing to do with it. Too many people think that their security and their whole thing about Christianity is based on their church membership. It is not. Most people, when they go down to the altar, they just join church. They don't really make a real confession of faith as Jesus Christ being their Lord and Savior. You know, I often tell this, this story, true story about my own wife. My own wife was a young woman, and she went down to the altar, and the pastor didn't ask her nothing about getting saved, making no confession of faith. He asked, are you willing to go by the bylaws of the church? My wife did not get saved until there was a revival later on by a woman who was in the same organization. She ran a revival and my wife got saved. But my wife had gone to this church all her life. But when she went down to get saved, she didn't make a confession of faith. So she didn't get saved until the revival. You know, uh, in reference to uh, something you just said a minute ago about how, you know, what good is it to have 2,500 members and not really touch the community? Uh, that puts me in mind in a lot of these mega ministries, they have all of these auxiliaries, all of these different, you know, they call them ministries. And I guess to a degree it is ministry in a sense in serving, you know, uh, blessing people with things. But my thing is this, there are a lot of ministries that I know about personally that have, you know, a couple thousand members and it is erroneously perceived that they're doing all of this major ministry because, you know, they have the youth ministry, they have, mm -hmm. you know, uh, job skills programs and all of these programs, just like you were saying. However, a lot of these people is like, OK, I may be able to go to this church and get job skills, get a resume, get food, and all these other things, which are needs. And I believe that God can and will bless that church for doing those things. But at the same time, it's like, I'm still not delivered from stuff. I'm still not healed. Mm -hmm. I still don't really know what it takes to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Yet and still, I'm erroneously taught and wind up believing that the only key to ministry is to have stuff to give to the community mm -hmm. you know and that's that's probably the furthest thing from the truth just having stuff because you know pimps or drug dealers a lot of them are charitable to mm -hmm. their communities they give things to the community mm -hmm. however we both know the truth concerning that so yeah i just i just wanted to speak to that point yeah well that's yeah, that's the whole whole crux of what i'm talking about is that people get hung up on, well, they got all these programs, um, you know. Yeah. But what what's really happening? Is there any transformation taking place? It, you, you you said this, uh, and this is something that needs that you can never you can never say this point at to the point of ad nauseum. Is what does salvation mean? So so it yeah. means the 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 total restoration. In fact, the Lord reminded me of this whenever I was pulling up. Uh, whenever I was coming up Bragg Street, he said, the Son of Man came to save that which was lost, not just who was lost. So, like, that meaning, like, yo, there's a lot of stuff. We lost a lot in the fall. And that's what we're supposed to be working to get back, is dominion in all these areas. Yeah. And, and, that's, and that's, that's the whole crux where I've been trying to get people to understand for really about 37 years, is to get people to understand that. And they've been slow. They've been slowful. Mm -hmm. um, it's amazing because people are so busy trying to be part of the clique. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the whole thing, is being part of the clique and not really understanding what real ministry is about. Like you said, all those things are good, but what good is it going to do you in the long run if you if your soul salvation, which is most important, because that's the greatest miracle of all, mm -hmm. is when a person gets saved, and so that's why I think it's it's really stupid for a person to say, well, I don't see how God can heal people now. Well, you you, you can't see into a man's soul mm -hmm. unless God allows it. 
So how can you believe that God can save someone, right. but he can't physically heal that same individual? Right. You know, so, so it's like, I'm going like, well, what's the logic here? Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't make sense. And it's getting people to understand, because remember, what did Dr. Mike Murdoch say? The only part of the Bible that going to help you? Is the part that you believe in. <coughs> yeah. So people can, you're right, so people are, uh, they're, they're short-sighted and they got, they got strongholds in their mind um, because they can believe, like what you said, they believe the scriptures that say that if you believe in the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. you die, you know, say you can get saved, but they don't believe in the, well, he was wounded for your transgressions, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, he's for your chest, they don't, they don't believe none of them scriptures, they don't believe none of them, it says that, uh, it says that Jesus went about doing good, uh, uh, healing, healing all, all that was that oppressed, was oppressed the devil, devil. for God was with it. Yeah, so it's like, well, yeah, you're, you're, uh, you're, you're picking and choosing, and then you're allowing the spirit of religion to trick you into, um, into into Christianizing, into justifying, trying to act like you're being spiritual because you don't believe. It's like, nah, the same devil of unbelief that's got you jacked up is the same devil of unbelief that's got atheists jacked up. In fact, in your case, it's even worse because you swear up and down mm -hmm. that you believe God, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, so, yeah, we just need help. <laughs> you know, it's the same thing with uh, a lot of uh, church folk. They will agree to abide by the rules, regulations, and bylaws of a church mm -hmm. because in their heart and in their minds, this is a, it, virtually, theoretically, it's a social club. It's a place where they feel like they belong and then don't mess around and give them a title or a job to do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. while they're in there. Wow. Uh, you know, let them work in the, the sound ministry, you know, or, or video ministry or something like that, it's like now they see that as a club, somewhere that they could go and belong, and they feel like they have some sort of purpose, you know, to where they, they can do something within the church. Well, the other side of that is a lot of those same people, if they join up to a church and they have hard times or something, and the pastor can't pay their rent or their light bill, they'll leave because in their minds, well, they're not doing real ministry. They don't care about God's people because he won't pay my light bill. Uh, you grown. You know, that's that, that's not the pastor's responsibility to pay your bills and to feed you. If he or she chose to do so, that's because either they chose to or God told them to do that. But that's not, you know, the main thing, man. Um, it's just crazy how people join up to those things. It's like, like I said, it's like when you was little, you wanted to get into the secret club. You had to know the password. Well, you'll say whatever it is. You'll do whatever is required to get in, to be a part. But then when it comes to actually doing what you're really supposed to do once you're in there, they don't want no parts of that. So it's, it's, it's jacked up, man. It really is. Just like you going back to what you just said, we just need help. Yeah. You know, you know the, the, the transformation... Uh, really boils down to people to stop being religious. It's getting people to understand it's one thing to be a geopolitical or let us say, um, like you say, social Christian as opposed to being a really a practical Christian, a, a person who's actually saved, uh, who's actually doing something. And that's why I'm always making this delineation with people because I'm trying to get folks to see, no, what you're doing is not real Christianity. You're being religious. You're being churchy. And those those terms are not necessarily synonymous. Mm -hmm. They don't really mean the same thing. And, it's, and so here's what happens. Because of bad teaching and bad traditions, you got to work to root that stuff out of folk. Mm -hmm. First of all, you got to let them understand, well, the whole, your whole approach ain't right. You know, and it's hard for people to get to get it because they've been in church all their life, many times. You're talking about a person that's been church before they even knew it. You know, the mamas would carry them, they went to church, or, or the parents joined church when they were little. 
and they 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 go into the ritual form a ceremony and they don't realize that's become entrenched. It's become a part of them, but it has nothing to do with Christ. Mm -hmm. Has nothing to do with the Father. And it's getting people to understand, well, no, still the way you approach God and the way you're doing it, you're still off. You're not right. In other words, remember how I gave that example that here's the plumb line, but you can just be just a few degrees off. Mm -hmm. But if you keep right on moving, yeah, you'll be able to see how far it how is. far you go. And it's and you know it's, it's it's interesting. You know, it's like when you talk to people, and you know, here's the whole thing about the Bible. The Bible says, "Line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little." All right. The Bible says there are heights, depths, and breadths of the spirit. It says that we go from faith to faith and from glory to glory. Now, here's a practical application of all of this. Have you ever read in the scripture and the Holy Spirit say something to you? Either through a message the individual was giving, whether you heard it live, whether you read it in a book, whether you heard it on a tape. But as time progressed, you can look back at that scripture again. And all of a sudden you see it's multifaceted and multi-layered. But again, there are what? Heights, depths, and breaths to the spirit. And also, it's just like anything else. When we all were six years old, we all read and learned at a certain level. When you get older, what? You're able to comprehend more. Mm -hmm. So you're able to take in more. Same thing happens, hopefully, as we mature in Christ. But what happens is you got folk who've been sitting up in church 30, 40 years, they're babes in Christ. But they don't know they're babes in Christ. Mm -hmm. See, that's the whole thing about it. They don't know they're babes in Christ. They'll tell you, well, I've been in the church 30 years. Yeah, well, you have been, but you don't know anything. Mm -hmm. And you know, the first person, the first the first impression rather, is the person gets insulted and they get defensive. But when we really begin to talk about what the word says, they don't know what it really says. They don't really have the essence. So who's right and who's wrong? And see what happens is most folk don't get the proper teaching and training. Therefore, they're walking around in arrogance, ignorance and arrogance. Mm -hmm. Because when the word of truth comes under the unction, get this, at times with the glory, and then they get bent out of shape. Because what? They really, it's a, it's reproof, mm -hmm. but many times you get in reproof, it's a rebuke. Right. But see, it doesn't always feel good. Mm -mm. Well, while you, what was coming to mind was um, we, we, we dealt with Psalm, the, the first chapter, like a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And it's talking about, like, you know, Christians being... Like uh, like a tree planted by rivers of living water that'll bring forth their fruit in due season. Mm -hmm. That's how I come to the Bible. Like, okay, whenever Jesus prayed for that one blind man, and whenever he prayed for him after he prayed for him the first time, Jesus intentionally let him see into the spirit realm to see what people look like, which are trees. You know what I'm saying? The, the reason I come we know that is because the Bible's always talking about us bearing fruit as Christians. So. It, go into the supernatural for a split second and 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 think about this the way that the Bible says it, not how you perceive it. The Bible says that people are trees. Yeah. And by being, the Bible talks about being rooted and grounded, established in the faith. You look like a tree in the realm of the spirit. And it talks about how um how it says that that the Father, that He's the type of person that He's constantly snipping and snapping, pruning, away, pruning, yeah, pruning these trees so that we can bear. More fruit. I'm, I'm in John, the fifteenth chapter, I think. Um, he said, "Yeah." Jesus said he was like, uh, he was like, 
uh, whom the Father loved, he uh, he's it. chasing it, and he says he purges the, the tree so that it can bear much more fruit. And the Bible says it's a fool, foolish people despise instruction. Foolish people forsake mm -hmm. wisdom and counsel. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is, is um, people, uh, because, because people have uh, been malnourished and taught a lot of the wrong stuff, it's, it, I used the analogy a while back, but it's, it's the truth. And I've noticed this having two nieces. You know what I'm saying? You mess around and you let them drink soda and Kool-Aid all the time. You handle some water, they look at you like you're crazy. Mm -hmm. Because the superficiality, the, the temporal, um, the, the instant gratification that the sugar brings, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, actually reprograms the body and the soul to a certain degree because the will is involved to want the stuff that's not good for you. Whereas... The very and, and, and what it does is it makes you reject the very thing that's good for you, mm -hmm. you know. But just but just getting back to what you were just saying about the reproof and the rebuke that that comes along, like this is a normal part of uh, of Christianity, which is how come when we look at the life of Jesus. Jesus was always humble. He was always broken. If you always broken, you you're unoffendable. Nobody can ever say anything to offend you. Whenever they tell you how you really are, because you're constantly looking at yourself and you recognize how jacked up you are. So whenever somebody says something to you and they're just like, well, yeah, man, you need to work on this. You if, if you're truly humble, you'll agree because you'll be like, yeah, man, you're right, man, because I was thinking about that. But the problem with this Christianity, the way that it's being taught, this is what came to mind whenever you first uh, picked up, was that basic Christianity starts at he who uh who tries to keep his life is going to lose his life but he who loses his life for the gospel's sake <laughs> should actually gain his life so that's like i know whenever i came back to the lord around like 17 18 and and i said this on camera last week a lot of times uh i would be out you know with my friends you know what i'm saying sinning you know what i'm saying smoking a bunch of weed da, da, da. and whenever i would come home i'd be high as a kite but I was drawn to go read my Bible because I knew I wasn't right. And a lot of times whenever I was reading the Word, all I was reading whenever I first came back to Christ was the four Gospels. And what was funny was because I was being literally pulled by, I was being drawn by the Spirit of God, as I'm redoing my first words and getting my salvation together, those were the scriptures that popped out at me. The ones about, wait a second, man, if I'm going to do this, I got to die. And... It was offensive, but it made perfect sense because check this out. This is Jesus said, Jesus said this. Jesus said this. He said, I can do nothing of myself except the Father do it. Mm -hmm. So Jesus was giving us the magic formula or the secret formula. Excuse me for saying magic formula, the secret formula, which is you can't be like God without God's help. But Unfortunately, this this Roman Catholic papal version of Christianity, this watered down, sugar coated version of the gospel. Another reason I come to people value things like these corny programs. You know, I'm saying all these buildings that are that <coughs> is because see those are works of the flesh. Those are things that are being done by the arm of flesh. You know, what I'm saying a lot of people, a lot of these pastors. It's not that God don't want them to build a daycare for the kids in the hood. It's just he wants them to build a daycare in his season and in his timing so that whenever the kids are coming to the daycare, everything has been orchestrated by God in the space and time continuum so that not only those kids get taken care of during the day, but more importantly, they will eventually be drawn to the spirit of God. They will eventually get saved. Every, every, I'm sorry. Good, go ahead. Everything in Christianity, when it's done right, it's designed to perform that thing inside of you until the until the day of Jesus Christ. It's designed. God wants everybody to be saved. The Bible says that in Peter. He says that he don't want nobody to go to hell. He wants everybody to come to life. Uh, and 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 the reason I come to time, it don't matter how long you've been in church, is because Christianity is an eternal thing. So nobody cares. If you if so if you've been sitting in church for thirty years and you ain't been dealing with eternity for thirty years. That you've at your 30 years is actually a testament against you. It's like, bro, because this is how come that the Bible says that in that day, Jesus is gonna be like, hey, bro, mm. depart from me, you workers of iniquity. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, I don't know you. If you've been in church, but you ain't know Jesus for 30 years, you haven't been going into the realm of eternity, drawing things from heaven, being rooted and grounded, established in the faith, 
30 years makes you look stupid. And I, and I have to say it like but Yeah, that but it's look. true. But it's true. Because the Bible says the fool has said in his heart there is no God. Right. So, so, so the, the, you know, the Bible clearly states certain things are foolish. And that's the whole thing I try to get across to people is that you need to stop and think about your approach. You know, and, it's, and see, by nature, we're stiff-necked, stubborn people. And we have to come to the realization that we are. And I, I say that, and see, that's, that's what? Inclusive. It's inclusive. Yeah, you include yourself in it, it. Yeah, yeah. It's inclusive. And the only way you're going to really get the way you need to get is you got to be honest with yourself. Because, see, people want to be sweet and cute. And, and they want to act like they ain't arrogant. They don't want to act like they're not proud. Mm -hmm. They want to act like, you know, they ain't black, sedated. You know, being sophisticated. You know? Because... As Jason said earlier, most folk in church, it's a social club. But that's not what it's about. And that's what people got to recognize. Real Christianity does mean being broken. You know, and, and guess what? You don't get broken just one time. It should be a continual breaking. And it don't always feel good. But if you put your hand to the plow, you're not supposed to look back. See, all see all, all the scripture, it, it, guess what? It counts. That's why you can't leave stuff out. That's why you have to look at the totality of the word and recognize that, guess what? It applies to all of us. You know, all of us should be making an assessment of ourselves. And guess what? We all fall short. We all fall short, but it's recognizing that we do fall short and actually making a concerted effort to do something about it. That's what consecration is about. See, that's, mm -hmm. see, that's what consecration is about. The Lord said to me the other day, he was like, the word consecration is synonymous with maintenance. It's like if you look, the reason I come to Floyd Mayweather is killing everybody is because his consecration, his maintenance, the standards that he holds himself up to when he trains, clearly he's training at a greater intensity than everybody because his endurance, his awareness, you know what I'm saying, his fundamentals are just superior to people. He, he make professional boxers look like children when they fight against him because his, once again, his consecration, the separation from ordinary life and and stepping into the realm where you're doing some stuff now now you lifting some real weights you know like that's you know like the lord was saying to I me mean, I, was, I was sitting watching some floyd where i just wanted just to watch him train you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying and i was watching the one video where he was going through his routine and you know he a little arrogant yes so, he is. So, so he's going through it and he's staring at the camera the whole time so he's like doing these immaculate maneuvers and he's looking at the camera like this is why i'm killing everybody yeah you know? in other words i'm just that good that i can do that yeah yeah, yeah. And, and that's the that's the thing to get people to understand is that people see you either behind the pulpit or on the platform but they don't recognize all this stuff that happened behind closed doors. See, <clears throat> I'm, I'm trying to get people to understand. You can't get up and look for God to move in the miraculous if you don't put your time in. You saw one time when you were over in a church playing music that the pastor was trying to do stuff that he seen other folk do. He was blowing. <laughs> he was blowing on people. They had no unction. None. It already looks foolish, but if you're not doing it and you haven't been instructed by God to do so. It looks real stupid. Yeah. <laughs> you're just going to look like, yeah. Yeah. He blowing on people. It ain't nothing happening. And he had that look after he did like, did it work? Yeah. I was like, you know, like, yes. That's, that's what I'm talking about. Ah. <laughs> See, people people doing stuff. By the arm of flesh. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it's it's like my wife my wife saw this. I didn't I didn't I wasn't privy to it, but she saw somebody 
lay hands on somebody. And they knew that they weren't anointed to really do that. But they, they had heard enough that something might happen. So what they did was they laid hands on a person and then tried to step back as far as they could with their hands stretched, stretched out. <coughs> see? See? <coughs> it's foolishness. Mm -hmm. It's foolishness. Boy, I felt those you hit my hands right there. It's, it's foolishness. If you aren't anointed, you got no business doing this stuff. If you aren't sincere. Mm -hmm. You don't copycat. That's what the seven sons of Sheba did. See, see the the Bible the Bible gives an example. They gonna talk about we are judge you by Jesus, whom Paul preached. It's pretty vicarious. Yeah, yeah. they are gonna be in the third person. Yeah. <laughs> and you know the demons look and said, "Well, you know we know who uh, Jesus is and Paul. You know, who are you?" And then them demons begin to think about it now. You got seven men. All of a sudden, the demon got so much power that the demons just tearing seven men up, tearing the clothes off, and they're helpless. So you don't want to try to tackle principalities and powers if you have not consecrated yourself, put your time in. See, some of this stuff, I'm like, it says, the Bible says, brethren, these things ought not to be. There's a way to handle these things. But you've got to have respect for God. you got to have respect for his Son and the Holy Spirit and the Word. But we got too many people. They don't. They don't. They don't. And, and here's, here's the whole thing about it. Again, the heights, depth, Breaths to the spirit. I just spoke earlier and I said the, the, the word, you can read the word, but the word can uh, give you different revelation at different times. Mm -hmm. And God has reminded me <clears throat> of something. I read this in a uh, Kenneth Hagin senior book. I don't know if you were even born, mm -hmm. or you might have been a little boy when I read the book, but even now, and there are various times when God will have me make a reference to it, and God's going to have me make a reference to one of the scriptures tonight. Um, but again, the, the multifaceted part of the spirit. Um, in the book of Ephesians, there are prayers there in that book. I feel it. I feel the change. You felt it. I saw you. Uh, when they hit you, See, he's linked up with me. That's what you call being linked up in the spirit. Um, it it, ta it it takes a while sometimes for people to, to understand these concepts. But once you get to a certain level in the Lord, people can sense what the Holy Spirit is doing, which is what we're supposed to be able to do. We're supposed to know where, where the service is going. Yeah, we're, su we're supposed to be able to be led by the Spirit. The Bible says those that are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. See, again, we make a reference right back to what the Word says. Now, I can remember sometimes people saying, well, the preacher would say it, then folks would say, well, how does it happen? And, the, and it was a good question mm -hmm. because what we have in too many churches is people are alluding to the scripture, mm -hmm. but they have no manifestation. They have no demonstration. You must be able to demonstrate. If you can't demonstrate, <coughs> then what? It's all rhetoric. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it looks like it's conjecture. See? It looks like what theory? Yeah, it, it ain't made real. Yeah, yeah. It, it hasn't been made no real yeah. because we're not seeing those infallible proofs. Yeah. Yeah. We're supposed to see infallible proofs. See, I, all I'm doing is it's word. <clears throat> if 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 some of y'all have studied the word, then you know what I'm saying. It's based or predicated on the word of God. 
What happens is folk are not used to it. And that's what God is concerned about. God is tired of preachers getting up and alluding to things, teaching on, oh, this is real popular, and this is hot right now, so I won't teach it in my church. Yeah, but do you have any manifestation? Well, if you don't have manifestation, do you know somebody who you can bring in to bring the manifestation? So I'm trying to show people how they're missing it. They won't do that because that'll take the spotlight off of them. Right, exactly, Ex exactly. But what makes it bad is they still show themselves to be foolish because folks are saying, well, you can't do it. Whether they come to your face and tell you or not. But people are thinking it. And there are people in congregations who see one of the reasons why God is having me say this is because I know some pastors are, are watching me. But see, the Lord just spoke to me about one individual uh, last week. He'd been shaken to the core. He thought because he gathered a bunch of people that everything was A-OK. -okay. And the Lord has let him know that he's missed it. It's not just gathering people. What kind of people are you making? I have always told the people that have spent time with me, I expect you to do the same thing I do. And people look at me real funny at times with their mouth would literally drop open. I say, well, guess what? If God's using me to work miracles, what makes you think he can't use you? We ought to demonstrate God's power. That's how you get people delivered. That's how you get people set free. That's how people come into the kingdom. Because their lives have been transformed. Because they've been changed. And Christianity is supposed to be a replication. If we don't have replication, then something's wrong. If we are not doing something that's making a difference in people's lives, then we're not doing our job because it says go into the hedges and the highways and preach the gospel to every creature. It's not just being behind a pulpit. It's not just being behind a rostrum. And that's what I'm trying to get across to people. That's what real ministry is. We don't have enough people actually doing the real work of the ministry. Fivefold ministry is based upon teaching the people out in the pews to go out and do the ministry that God's called them to do, where they can be effective on their job. A lot of times if they're in the school, they're either workers in the school or they're going to the school. Guess what? People have needs. People have problems. People need help. And guess what? If they can be around you and see and feel the power of God, it can make a difference. The other night was my, it was actually my 36th anniversary. Talk about the 35 years mm -hmm. uh, that God gave me the revelation. But we've been married 36 years. Um, <clears throat> and the young lady that waited on us, when we had dinner. She was cordial, but I could tell something was amiss. A what it was, I believe she's backslidden. I think she's been around the Spirit of God because it was just something about the look she had on her face and the way she was acting when she was around us. I believe she either saw the unction on us and or felt the presence of God. When an individual has been around the real presence of God, they never forget it. They never forget it. I can remember I was, um, well, I was single then. Uh, I was living at home and I was in the mall at the Belt Tyler. And um, I was staying with my sister. Uh, we were in Belts together. And all of a sudden, I felt the Spirit of God. Go right past me. I turned around. It was a young, it was a young white guy, and he was he had a t-shirt on and he had the church he went to, 
went to the Rock Church, a church based out of uh, Taiwan area. But see what? I immediately what recognized God's spirit. Like I said, my back was a little turned, but while I felt God's spirit go past me. You can run across somebody that may have been in church years ago, but they've been around God's spirit. Guess what? They'll know if they're around somebody else. The spirit of God is real. Perhaps somebody's watching right now. <coughs> you may be backslidden. You may have gotten away from God. But you know God's spirit. And you know enough of the word to know that I know what I'm talking about. That's another thing, too. People can be backslidden. But if they had been brought up in the church and the word was really performed well, they know whether you're talking the word or not. Mm -hmm. See, that's why a lot of times, see, these meetings are, are tailor-made. The Holy Spirit will lead a certain way, give certain scriptures, because the Holy Spirit knows who the audience is. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, let me get into the other aspect of it. We're talking about the multifaceted aspect of the word. Years ago, when I read this book, I can't remember what book it was. I've read several books by Kenneth Hagin Sr. And, uh, but this particular book talked about the prayers in the book of Ephesians. I want to talk about the first prayer because it actually entails a great deal. Really, in the past few weeks, I had to go back and reassess it myself. Because again, see, so you can look at the word, and then after a while, you look at it again. So wait a minute. Even though I mouth those words, I'm seeing something I hadn't seen before. God to give a revelation that you really hadn't had before. And even though you said it, you know, you just kind of just touched upon it. Mm -hmm. But you know, a lot of times when God gives a revelation, it's like it jumps out at you. Mm -hmm. And that's what this is about. So if you got your Bible, <clears throat> turn to the book of Ephesians. I want to talk about the difference in what the Lord <clears throat> really has been talking about in the last couple of weeks. And I've been meditating or chewing on it myself. Of course, you people with your smartphones can do it quicker. But here's my strong concordance. Well, I had this book a long time. I, bought, I think I got this book from uh, R.W. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got this book back in back in the, back in the eighties. Yeah, he has some special going on. Wow, copyright 79. But I know I got this. <coughs> we got married in 79. So I might have bought this book <clears throat> 35 years ago. I know I got your mama, her Bible. Mm -hmm. And I bought this from Shambach Ministries. Um, yeah, what you mean that? Uh, see if you can. Find a uh, glory. Mm -hmm. Let me let me read the scripture. Uh, it's First Corinthians. I'm sorry. First Ephesians. Uh, first chapter of Ephesians and first chapter. And I'm going to start at the fifth, fifteenth verse. Yeah, it is sixteenth verse. You could say sixteen, but I'll start at fifteen. Make make it sound a little more fluid. Wherefore also after I heard of your faith in the Lord. Jesus and love to all the saints. Now we're going to 16. Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of him. Let's go back and say that again. Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. 
that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. <clears throat> the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the help of his calling and what is the riches of his glory to his inheritance in the saints. Now that's twice the word glory is popped up. And was it seeing greatness of his power to us with who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far from all principality and power, and might and dominion in every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And that put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head of all things to the church, which is his body, full of him that filleth all in all. What in the past couple of weeks? It dawned on me, and I know I've read that scripture many times. Had y'all read it? Even in, you know, this this year we've read the scripture. Mm -hmm. um, but God reminded me there were two references to glory here. Now in Greek, the word glory is doxa, d o x a, mm -hmm. and essentially. It really means that the glory is the essence of God. Mm -hmm. It means all that God has and all that God is. But when we say that, in essence, what are we really saying? Mm -hmm. Now we know that glory is different from anointing. Boy, I feel that I feel a change going on when I said that. The atmosphere just changed when I said that. See. Glory is different from anointing. Now, the word says that Jesus is not coming back for what kind of a church? He's coming back for a glorious church. A glorious church without spot or wrinkle. A glorious church. See, we got a lot, we got a lot that we gotta work on. Because we haven't even begun to <coughs> tap into glory. Glory is different from anointing. Anointing is here. Glory is here. It's a vast difference. I have actually functioned in glory sporadically for 20 years. Good 20 years or so. See, I'm only now really becoming into understanding myself. The first time I really tapped into the realms of glory was through Mars Cirillo. Glory is different. Remember the Bible says that what heights, depths, and rest of the spirit? You go from faith to faith, from glory to glory. Mm -hmm. Well, as your faith increases, you start tapping at times to the realm of glory. As you work on your consecration, you can begin to move from the realm of anointing to the realm of glory. Mm -hmm. The Hebrew word is kabod. Yeah, the kabod, mm -hmm. which means the weight of the heaviness. Mm -hmm. Now, I can, can I read it in the Yeah, Hebrew sure, Hebrew? sure. Okay, so I got it in Greek. And you're right, it was, let me, let me get it in. Yeah, so that little bitty print. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm seeing how. I had to have you lay hands on my eyes, but I didn't have to get close to books like this before. <coughs> you know what I'm saying? I used to be nice with it. I, I always hate a little bit of print, even though I could see these, but I could. But moving into glory is a whole different day. And I'm looking at we've dealt more with gl glory. <laughs> <clears throat> on a continual basis, mm -hmm. the last what seven years maybe? Yeah, if it's twenty fifteen, you guys came back talking about hurts all. Yeah, it was 08. Yeah, it was 08. It was 08, 09. It was after y'all came back from the uh, from the uh, from the what's his face from 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 the World Conference. I think you guys were in Tennessee because you came back and y'all kept replaying that uh, Sid Roth clip where the folk went through, where the truck went through their car. Right. Because they were in the glory realm. Right. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, exactly. And it's, and it's like, like I said, it's been a realm that we tapped at times, but it's like, 
I didn't recognize that it was another realm. Because see, the first time I heard something like that, R. W. Shambaugh told a story about that. He said, like, "Yeah, uh -huh. see, where that where it was that where that, yeah, that guy got caught up in that jackknife, and the truck was about to hit his car, and the person just yelled, Jesus! And next thing you knew, they were on the side of the jackknife trailer, and the guy kept, you know, he." He looked, he said, wait a minute. He said, how'd you get on the other side? Because you should be dead because when it jacked not, there was nowhere to go. See, that, see that's, what, see, that's what I'm saying. I've come to the realization that it's been something that I've gone in and out of. In and out of it. But here's what I noticed through the years. Again, as I worked on my consecration, mm -hmm. That's the part that I've always hated about working a job because having to deal with a job, you can't always consecrate yourself the way you want to. If you're working a physical job, that means you need to eat to fuel your body. You need to rest your body. You know? Mm -hmm. And you can't burn yourself out. Some preachers, they, they have done it when they've been full time, but they still didn't rest their body right. But it makes a difference when you <clears throat> you got to go and contend on a job 8, 10, 12 hours a day. Mm -hmm. Because at least you could spend four or five of those hours in front of the Lord mm -hmm. if you ain't working a regular job. So if you really want to go on like a 10 day, 20 day, 21 day fast. It's easy. It's easy, yeah, because it's just your problem. <clears throat> it's easier because you not you don't have to expend energy working. Mm -hmm. And really you don't have to be worried with the distractions of stuff on the job. Yeah, yeah that's the biggest thing. Yeah, distractions. I, I gotta say this when you when you first started, uh when you first brought this subject up, man, oh my god. God just brought back how I don't know it's, it's just so much he said at one time but the main thing that you've been showing me since you just started this a few minutes ago is that you reminded us that the glory is all God has and all God <coughs> is well he was the first thing he showed me when you said that was how people are literally dying because they tried to take that they tried to take something that doesn't belong to them. Mm -hmm. They tried to take something they can't handle and they don't even fully understand. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually, in reference to a couple other things on the way back here this evening, I was talking about that, about uh, certain people that we know about personally that are no longer here because they tried to build kingdoms of their own and empires of their own and refused to repent. And 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 they they've taken the glory of God for so long, and and in some ways wind up being worshipped by the people that follow them. Mm -hmm. And these people are also being judged because they're no longer following Jesus, but they're following this man or these men, you know, for so long. And about how we have absolutely no choice but to completely die if we're going to be used by him at all because if his glory is all that he has and all that he is in order for us to be used by him we have to become completely inanimate we have to be completely dead and my god that, that the atmosphere is changing again <coughs> We have to be completely, completely, completely dead. I mean, threshed out, just completely dead. That's that's the only thing I can come up with in order for us to be used by him. Because if he chooses to use us the way that he wants to use us, number one, the only thing that's going to be seen is him, which also means that if we desire to be used by him that we can't have 
us in us. We we have to we have to excrete all that. We have to completely die and our and avail ourselves to him completely. It's like a glove. It resembles a hand, but it isn't one. No, it only it only goes by the mold. Right. Of the, yeah. And it only serves the purpose that it's designed by someone else greater than the gloves. It only serves that purpose if and when the master of it uses it. And of course, without dropping many dimes, but just how, you know, with musical instruments, it's subject to the master of it. Uh, what we was referencing earlier today, what we reference all the time about how Jesus, Jesus himself said he can do nothing of himself except what he sees his father mm -hmm. do. What is that? Uh, John chapter 5, I think. Mm -hmm. It's either John chapter 4, verse 5, or vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, well, if, and it says in Ephesians 1, what we just finished reading, it says the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, right. the Father of glory. Mm -hmm. Like, man, if, if he's the God of Jesus Christ, and the only way we can receive any righteousness whatsoever is by Jesus Christ, but God the Father is his father. Mm -hmm. Man, <laughs> this, I mean, it's just, and it's exactly, it's exactly like what you just finished saying. It was through this ministry, you know, I got exposed to this, this, this prayer. And I know, I, I can't remember how many months I was praying this over myself every day. I taught it, you know, in the Bible study. And now that after, I don't know how many months, I finally come back to the scripture. And just like you said, it's multifaceted. This time coming back to it, it means something else far bigger and greater than it did when I read this same scripture three months ago. Mm -hmm. Who knows what it's going to mean to me six months from now. Exactly. Because, you know, it, it just, it, the Lord just had me go back to it. I said, wait a minute. And I actually went back and, because what I was doing, I was actually <clears throat> giving some scripture to, uh, the UPS man, because our UPS driver, he's yeah, saved. He he's saved. And uh, I was going back through, and I said, wait a minute. And I actually went back and hit the bowl on the thing, you know. I was putting it on paper. And I, because the Lord was, and I've taught him a little bit about glory, but I wanted him to, to look at that and start paying attention to it. I said, Lord, we said it, but it's like we just said it and just, we missed it, you know, but that's but that's how the word is. You go back and go like, God, how can I be that stupid and miss that? But you know, we only see and know in part. And that see, that's the cool thing about it. We're all subject to the same thing. Mm -hmm. Core all human. Mm -hmm. And we get no more revelation than what the spirit reveals in us. But the biggest thing about it is is our pursuit. Right. Because that's 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 the very thing. Pursuit is almost like, um, in one way, I guess you can think of it as like your spiritual hands, or you can think of it like like your gravitational pull. It's like you can have two people uh, of the same age or whatever, uh, or the same level of development, but if one person, if one <coughs> person's des desire and pursuit is greater, they're always going to be ahead of the person whose desire and pursuit is real average mm -hmm. because. That's all that God's looking for. God, like God, literally be looking back or be looking at people like, oh, oh, okay, oh, so so you trying to get that? Mm -hmm. And the thing, of, and the thing about that, it says that you'll be like a tree planted by rivers of living water that brings forth his fruit in due season. So it's like what happens is, is when you spend time with God and you spend time in the presence of God, uh, a lot of stuff is being put inside of you. And then next thing you know, as you continue to water and to um, and to keep care to watch over, he said he watch over that word to perform, but you got to let him watch over the word in your life. You know what I'm saying? Like you got to stay before him and constantly be asking the questions. Sooner or later, you're going to look up and you're going to be like, oh my God, like this is a lot of times what be happening in the mule Christianity. And I mean to say it like that, like. I just sometimes I have to stop back and pinch myself because I'm like, yo, this is like this is happening. Like, you know what I'm saying, like, yo, we went in on this, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that because I'm not saying it from a place of doubt. 
I'm saying it from a place of like reverential awe, like, yo, like God really do have all the power. You know what I'm saying? It's like sometimes like you just have to stop and uh and pinch yourself because the stuff be uh be a manifestation. Yeah, manifestation. Yeah, it is. You pray about it, but um, I got the. Did you find it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had it, but I was uh, I can read this first. So, so glory in the Old Testament is combined, uh, and it means weight. Um, and it also means splendor or copiousness. It also means honor. Uh, with, well, copious means that it's thick. Uh huh. Exactly. Yeah. So, so let's go ahead. Let's help some people out. This happened to me this morning when you, whenever I woke up, you was you was listening to Woody Martin. Mm -hmm. So there's sometimes, and I've seen people get scared <coughs> whenever this will happen. Where there'll be sometimes where you'll be in a meeting, or it, it can be a meeting of any magnitude, whether you're in a room full of ten thousand people, a few hundred people, or just five people. And a man or a woman of God will start doing their thing. And next thing you know, like, you'll feel, like, you'll literally feel a weight. It'll be like, yo, like, it's getting kind of heavy in here. You know what I'm saying? Or uh, for me, a lot of times, like, whenever I'm, like, laying before the Lord and I'm just, like, just cooling out, just, you know, just enjoying him, I'll know whenever the glory is present because the, the that thickness that, that it describes in here, you can feel it, man. In fact, sometimes, like, what I'll do is I'll try to move, and I'm like, yeah, if I can't move, yeah, I know I'm right in, I'm yeah, right in the middle. Right yeah, you know what I'm saying? And that's, and the thing, and David Taylor said something that really challenged me um, when he was talking about the purpose of Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah and the Feast of Trumpets every year. He mm -hmm. said that Christians, that our weight is supposed to increase every year. He says, he's like, so he was getting back to your point about spiritual maturity, mm -hmm. sitting in church 30 years, you ain't got nothing done. Mm -hmm. Every year, we're supposed to take on more the glory of God because the Bible says you move from faith to faith and from glory to glory. So the glory that you had last year is supposed to be, uh, you're supposed to have a greater or a stronger glory or a heavier glory this year. And the reason why you need a heavier glory is because it's the glory of God is what moves principalities and powers. You know what I'm saying? Because the, the difference between, one of the biggest differences between anointing and glory is that the anointing uh, moves things uh, temporarily. And, and, I, and I hate to phrase it like that, but that's the only way I can phrase <coughs> yeah. it. Whereas the glory establishes a thing. Uh, the glory, the glory is like, not only am I going to move this out of the way, but this is how it's going to be until Jesus comes back. You know what I'm saying? Or or unless like the people who uh, who God was using, they don't they don't keep proper maintenance. You know what I'm saying? In order to because the thing about the glory, the glory is also an atmosphere. It's the atmosphere of heaven. So when we talk about an atmosphere, the thing about the earth's atmosphere, you know what I'm saying? We got we got all these different gases that make up the earth's atmosphere. If any of those balances of gases get thrown off, we're gonna die. You know what I'm saying? Because it's the very, it's the atmosphere that we need. That's how I come to places like L.A., you know what I'm saying, uh, 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 Beijing, you know what I'm saying, folk walking around with masks on mm -hmm. because they've ruined the atmosphere over those cities with pollution. You know what I'm saying? Like the, 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 the atmosphere of that city is toxic. It ends up turning on the very people that need it. But the thing about the glory is the, uh, the glory is the very atmosphere of of heaven, it's the very, it's the rare, the, rock, the rare fire of heaven, you know what I'm saying, but that is slick, but that's real, and you know, it, it's a, stuff move a lot different whenever the glory is involved, you ain't got to deal with time. It, it, does, it does, because when you can walk into an area, and you can tell when the glory is hit, and like you said, everything just, has just changed, um, it's just, the atmosphere is just different. There are times when Marcelo would just walk out on stage, and when he would walk out on stage, and I'd be way back. I remember when I got my watch, and he walked out on stage, and I was way back in the room. But when he walked out, this presence just came right to the back of the room as he came out. That was the glory of God that was on him. The mm -hmm. presence of God that was on him. Mm -hmm. Much less talking about when I got my watch. Mm -hmm. That was crazy. He and Teresa were standing there. And it was an energy field around them two people. Mm -hmm. what, it was an energy field. And the closer you got to them, the stronger it got. Mm -hmm. 
Then, I mean, you're walking through and you're feeling all this, like, static electricity mm -hmm. all over. You know, uh, David, you know, David Taylor talking about how, uh, <clears throat> well, we know around the throne of God, they're lightning bolts. Mm -hmm. And how every now and then, say, the Captain Cool meeting. I, I remember that seeing that picture, too, where you saw that blue streak. Mm -hmm. Go across there, like she's looking this way, and that light is going across there. Mm -hmm. um, that's what it felt like getting my watch. I was stunned. I was just, you know, see, people want to use the term hypnotized and mesmerized. It's mesmerized, but it's not hypnotism. See, people make the mistake of thinking that people are mass hypnotizing meetings. No, they're not. That's just the power of God, just short circuit your body. Yeah. That's why the Bible says, I fell as a dead man before him. It's because of the, that glory, mm -hmm. that when presence. It, when it says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, the thing about <clears> it is, <throat> on that day, the glory and the power of God, like the manifold, like everything, that he is, mm -hmm. is going to be, we're going to be before all of that. It says we shall see his face. We shall see him as he is. Mm -hmm. So because of that. You're going to get on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> what you going to do? You can't help but lay prostrate. You know, yeah. you know the devil worshippers, they, um, oh my God. They're gonna, uh, yeah, you. yeah, yeah, they're, they're going to they're gonna recognize who the real Lord is. Mm -hmm. I can remember years ago, I want to say in the 90s, uh, when I used to, Especially when we had the satellite dish. I just kept Benny Hinn four or five times a day because I knew when he'd be on and I'd just be going from satellite to satellite. And I remember then, um, this one that the Mr. Beachy was still working, it was in our bedroom. Mm -hmm. I remember Benny was on and I was walking by the TV. Mm -hmm. I got pulled down to my knees. I was just walking by, and the presence hit me, and I just, I just went to my knees, and it was an involuntary reflex. That's yeah, that's real exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Every knee shout out. This is involuntary. Yeah, that yeah. was involuntary. Yeah. I was walking by. Next thing I know, I felt myself being pulled down to my knees. And we ain't talking about worshiping Benny Hinn. Man, don't, no. don't even don't even try to go it's, in that direction. The presence of God yeah. was just that real. Was just that real. You know, I'm trying to get people to understand. You must stop putting the 12 apostles and consider them as supermen. They were not. They were men like you and I. The Bible even talks about the apostles of old saying what? They were men of like passions as we are, and the apostles were alluding to the prophets. Mm -hmm. But remember, what is the foundation of the church? It's on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Please see we what still the word, still the word. This word is literal. It's not allegory. It's it's not figurative. It's literal, and God wants to take you into the glory realm. That's what He wants to do. But you've got to be willing to go. Right. And in order to, I got this one. You got to die. I'm still dying. I ain't dead. Because you die so many deaths, and guess what? You got to die some more. Hmm. That's uh, the Lord was reminding me when the trees started changing, like cut the leaves and stuff. That's when He started talking to me about this tree thing. He mm -hmm. was like, He was like, yeah, bro. He was like, the trees go through a death, burial, and resurrection every year. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? With the shedding of leaves. And He was like, y'all supposed to be. He was like, my word says y'all supposed to be trees of righteousness. So this process that you're describing of uh, of of death, burial, and resurrection. You know what I'm saying? The same Spirit that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead. It's supposed to dwell in us, and it's and it's the spirit of glory. Like it's it's the Holy Spirit. Like it's supposed to take us through that process. And another thing too, um, I know this personally. Um, if you don't stay connected to God when you start a particular endeavor, you'll you'll have points in it where you'll forget that you're in the process of mm -hmm. dying 
of death, burial, and resurrection. Because notice how the first two parts suck. <laughs> death, burial. The resurrection part's off the chain, but that death and burial, man, you really got to make sure that if you go through the first, because because another thing the Lord's really been dealing with me a lot lately is, uh, and he's been using music to do it. He's like, pre, he's like, I've been telling you the whole time, precept upon precept, line upon line. He's like, dude, these things take time to to mm -hmm. see. So a lot of Christians, a lot of you guys, uh, you 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 you're falling short not because you ain't pursuing the right stuff, but because you're not pursuing things to you're not allowing things to happen to to maturation you're actually aborting the mission it ain't the devil coming against you it ain't witchcraft you know what I'm saying it ain't it ain't even a crappy pastor teaching you the wrong things it's a lot of a lot of times what happens is when we when we go through that first part we we some of us we can get through death we can get through dying but then the next phase is the burial and a lot of times what'll happen is if we done die, you know what I'm saying, and then we get to the burial, and then the burial part hurts, people abort, and the next thing you know, you've resurrected, but you you ain't come out of the grave with all power. The Bible says that Jesus came out of the grave with all glory and power in his hands. You know what I'm saying? He went, when he came back from the dead, it, it won't, he didn't come back half-baked. He had everything that he was supposed to have. And the Bible says that we're supposed to let patience work her perfect work in us. You know what I'm saying? So it, there's a certain, there's a certain, um, and the Bible says that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. So while we're going through this process, we got to remember in, in the parts that like where it really, really, really hurts. It's like, dude, wait a second, man. God ain't left me, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't wild. You know what I mean? I know uh, personally, um, like if I'll be fasting, right? Like Pops talked about this before. You talk about that hunger headache. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. A lot of people are jumping ship during fast because your body start acting crazy. Well, understand, uh, you're you're literally killing your flesh. Now you're not physically gonna die. You know what I'm saying? See, that's another thing. People, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. your body starts acting weird, and then you get carnal and you, well, maybe I need to eat something because my blood sugar getting low. How God gonna tell you to go on a fast and then God gonna kill you on a fast? That don't make any sense. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm glad you brought the music piece back up because that's a uh, God. God was speaking to me yesterday about that, and he asked me a question. He was like, "Out of all of the professional musicians you know, how many of them, although they're professional, how many of them by the world standards are professional in that they have musical degrees? Not a lot of them. Right. There are some who do, who did go to school, you know, actually got their degree and then got to where they're at." But there are lots and lots and lots of them, no matter what genre, no matter what instrument, that are professionals that don't have a piece of paper, per se. Mm -hmm. However, the, the thing that made them them in that music world is they put their time in. They studied their craft. Then they put more time in. Then they studied some more. They kept doing that until they became professional at whatever it is that they're doing. What's well, the same thing that he's been teaching us this whole time? It's like, what are you waiting on a piece of paper and a license for? Why why are you doing that? You know, and it, and it's and it's it's sad how so many people will put time in to complete the requirements the church tells you you have to complete to get a piece of paper. Mm. However, you're not even spiritually equipped. You're not even officially equipped to do whatever it is that the paper is telling that you that you can do right. people there are lots of people out here with college degrees right. they went paid their money got their degree mm -hmm. but are no more skilled in that area than someone who's just been doing the job mm -hmm. you know longer than them so it it, it goes back to the, what we were just talking about well, what we've been talking about for a while it's like if you were called to do a certain thing and you know what that calling is you know what it takes and you put your time in you put in the work you avail yourself before God you die before him you let him you know purge you you let him mold you and make you and all these other things the work I show you my faith by my works mm -hmm. you know we preach the gospel with signs following well from there if God is performing these miracle signs and wonders through us, 
there's really not much more discussion required after that mm -hmm. because the work you know spoke for itself so when it when it comes to you know getting a piece of paper one of my greatest examples is uh dr barry harris mm -hmm. does he have a formal degree no 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 not at all no but, he's got honorary doctorates right. but they were bestowed upon them after people look back they're like wait a second you've been this proficient for 50 60 years right. Please come to our university because you've already done the work. You you already are a doctor. And you just haven't been officially. He's telling people who have doctors, hey, that's wrong. Exactly. Yeah. That's my favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, that's, that's wrong. wrong. Play, play my scale. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Who can say that? Yeah. Play my scale. You yeah. know, just but he put his work in. Yeah. And and there it is, you know. Well, that's what this is about. I mean, and, and the cool part about it is going to show you how fair God is because you it's, it's open to everybody, you know, regardless, regardless of where they are in their walk with the Lord, mm -hmm. God wants everybody to walk in glory. Mm -hmm. God wants everybody to, to walk in his power, and he wants them to get to know him personally. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's about. It's about intimacy, but you have to go after it, and you have to, it's, it's based on pursuit. Mm -hmm. It really is based on pursuit, and sometimes, I got news for you, God will hide from you. Sounds funny to say that, but, but many times... You'll be talking to the Lord. Lord ain't saying nothing, mm -hmm. you know, and he's 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 testing you. Yeah, to see if you'll keep doing it. it is, another way of looking at it is like you know how you'll call somebody, you know, what I'm saying you're real good friends with, and you might call them earlier that day, and they pick up. Like you know, what I'm saying the joint ain't even finished ringing, and they pick up. But then there are other times you call, them, you be saying, hey, "Okay, yo, what's taking this person so long to answer the phone?" And then finally they'll answer the phone. It's like that a lot of times, you know what I'm saying, whenever you're uh when you're pursuing God. It's not that God ain't gonna answer the phone, but usually the stuff, in fact, there ain't no usually. This is this is a spiritual fact. The stuff that take the longest for you to get through, for you to break through, is usually the stuff that's actually going to last the longest. Because that's the the uh the the, the proof of yeah, it's like the proof of the magnitude of the blessing. The proof of it is what you gotta go through to get it. Like that's like like stop and think about how in order to get when Jesus died on the cross through his sacrifice, when he died, not only did he provide eternal salvation for everybody that was alive when he was on the planet, he provided eternal salvation for everybody that had gone before him and he provided eternal salvation for everybody that would come after him. You know what I'm saying? This is something that, OK, uh, remember, the Bible says uh during Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, it says that he actually, it says that the same that ascended is the same that descended. And it says that whenever he ascended, that he gave many gifts unto, that he gave gifts unto men. And then that's whenever Ephesians 4 goes into Ephesians 4 and 11. Because the callings, you were talking about being called to ministry early. See, I don't have any, um, any formal uh, uh, pieces of paper, you know what I'm saying, and teaching the word. And I'll be rapping with preachers all the time. They'd be like, bro, when you study, it's just like, bro, the school of the Holy Spirit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, I got a Bible of concordance and I pray and God be telling me cool stuff about his word. Uh, but the reason why is, uh, the reason why that's possible is because the Bible says in John, it's, I think it's John 15, G Jesus said, I have called you and I have ordained you to go forth. So, I mean, until the Lord tells me I need to officially get ordained, and I probably, you know what I'm saying, because my pop got more degrees than a thermometer, I'll probably have him ordain me, like officially. But until I ain't even worried about being officially ordained, you know what I'm saying, I'm saved. I know the call of God is on my life. I'm just going to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't need a piece of paper uh, by man's standards to, uh, to validate me. But getting back to this, um, to the people in the past, uh, remember, uh, until Jesus had died on the cross, everybody in the Old Testament went down into Sheol too. Mm -hmm. Remember, Sheol is referred to as the grave. Part of Sheol was like hell where evildoers went. And then part of Sheol was where it was unfortunately because Adam sinned against God. Even righteous people had to go and, and sit in Sheol. The part of Sheol that they occupied was called Abraham's bosom. We learned this in the story of Lazarus. You mm -hmm. read it whenever you were in Sunday school. You know what I'm saying? Lazarus was... Uh, it was the poor was the leper poor dude and then you had the rich man who used to be mean to him to die rich man they both they both die 
rich man goes to hell, he's burning, and he asking Lazarus for some water, and Lazarus is like, dude, I can't even give you the water even, even if I want even if I want to, because mm -hmm. there's a great gulf betwixt yeah. us. You know what I'm saying? In fact, the book of Enoch talks about how Sheol was designed like that. The, that the righteous sat on one side, and then the uh and then the folk who were uh evildoers, how they sat on the other side. It wasn't until the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ where Jesus could see, remember, the same rules that applied to everybody before Christ applied to Jesus too. And he was the change agent. He was the guy that, that took everything from one level to the next level. And what Jesus did, he went to hell and Satan's thinking, oh, snap, we got him too. He going he to be at Abraham's bosom. But then Jesus was like, nah, homie, nah. In fact, give me the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Uh, and I'm taking all of these people with me. You know what I'm saying? So, so when we uh, uh, when we talk about having to go through stuff, Philippians the second chapter admonishes us to look at Jesus who went through what he went through, and how he endured what he went through. You know what I'm saying? Jesus had you you think it's hard for you? You know what I'm saying? To fast 21 days or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Just so you can break some principalities over your region. Imagine having to die. Imagine having to fast for 40 days in the desert with no food or water. And then battle Satan face to face to break principalities and powers over the entire planet. You know what I'm saying? So I'm saying that to say that as we're going through these things, maybe I'm just preaching to myself. But you know what I'm saying? These are definitely we we already have the template like laid out for us. You know what I mean? Like in order to uh, in order to endure and to not punk out. Like that's the biggest thing. You know what I'm saying? It's like uh uh uh. People, the Bible talks about enduring to the end. You know, what I'm saying how the race ain't given to the mm -hmm. folk who run the fastest; it's given to the people who endure. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things I've admired about my parents. You know, what I'm saying the whole time, it's like, bro, if I could tell you, like, how it looks like cats have been losing, but like every time it looks like it's about everything's about to fall completely apart, like that's whenever God comes through. You know, what I'm saying, and what I've admired in them is while everything is going nuts and falling apart, like they still be in like, okay, they, they still be folk. They're still focused. You know what I'm saying? And the, the, the reason why I'm saying that is because like pop said, it's all about pursuit. Um, you have to want to do the will of God. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it, the Bible says it's, it's spirit that worketh in you both to will and do of his good pleasure. But the only way that his spirit can work in you to will and do of his good pleasure is that you have to yield to his spirit. The Bible says that we are supposed to yield to the spirit of God. You know what I'm saying? If you're not yielded to the spirit of God, he can't will it because there are two wills at work. How is your will going to be in the way? That's what Jason was talking about earlier. In order to be used in the glory, you know what I'm saying? You can't, you, your will has to be completely uh, out of the way, and it has to, the only will that can exist is the will of God. We see this in the life of Jesus who says, I came, I ain't come to do nothing but the will of my dad. Like, that's that's it. So Yeah, so. yeah that's, no, that's it. It's what it boils down to. <clears throat> and, you know, it's, it's, the word is here, you know, for, for us to, you know, be, be, be admonished, but it's also for edification. I remind people it's for edification as well. It's just that we just have to look at <clears throat> how the word continues to. Hopefully, it does prune us. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, at the same time, though, we're getting nourished by by you know that the living water. Mm -hmm. it's, it, again, that multifaceted aspect of it. Um, you have to stay focused, man. You gotta stay focused. And it's about all the different stuff that's going on because the enemy. We try to come at you from all these different angles, but you know you have to stay in your pursuit. And you know I was saying to people, you know, uh, be vigilant. You know, you have to be, and uh, don't lose sight of what you know what's going on. You have to, you have to, and you have to, like David said, you have to encourage yourself in the Lord. Mm -hmm. You really, you know, you literally you have to look at it. You got to look at the word. You got to say, hey, well, I really have to do it. Because there are going to be times if you look at the circumstances yeah. and just keep see circumstances, you'll be bummed, you be bummed out. You know, so you, it's not like the circumstances, you know, aren't there, but you see beyond that. That's what faith is. Faith sees beyond what's in the now because you're looking into your future. And uh, you say, it ain't always going to be like this. You know, especially when the Lord will give you a glimpse of something. So, you know... Um, but even if he doesn't, 
you go by what his word says. You have to believe in the word. So you got to look at the word, read the word, believe the word. Because uh, it's still based or predicated on what you believe. Make sure you believe in the right stuff. Because sometimes you believe the wrong stuff, eh, you can get a mess. But um, God wants to empower you. He, he wants us empowered. And he wants us aware. He wants us to know what's going on. And I would just say just continue to pursue and keep asking questions. I'm, I, I'm always asking questions. Uh, I was always like that before I, before I come to Christ. I was an inquisitive child. <clears throat> so stay inquisitive. You know, keep asking it. And uh, eventually you get the answer. I got to admit, sometimes I wish I had it quicker than I got it. But, you know. Keep asking. Keep knocking. Keep knocking. Just keep right on knocking. That's how it works. And uh, we're going to believe that God is going to usher in a new level of glory tonight. And um, regardless of whatever it is that you need, God knows what your needs are. But bring your needs before him. And uh, we're going to agree. That God is going to move in whatever areas in your life that you need him to move in. Because that's what he saw. He's a way maker. That's what he is. He's a way maker. And we're just informed to make a way where there seemeth to be no way. So we're going to petition him now. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that you are the Father of glory. And we are reminded of that in your word and and Lord as we come before you tonight we ask that you do that you will give us a new revelation in the wisdom and knowledge of you and what you are doing Lord not just only in our lives but in the lives of others help us that we can be those agents of change that we can do or say the right thing at the proper moment that we can move in your time, Lord, uh, that we become one with eternity, that we can ishimara dosira de spirita, that we can say that right now we're that rhema word at that right time that can change a situation. Lord, help us to be change agents, Lord, that we can literally walk in a room and change the atmosphere. Ishimara dosira de spirita, boshonda omenendir de biara. Rudo Osh Meridero to Mero de Basondo. Eshi Merido Sandra Omenendir de Biara Basande. Lord, there are mysteries. There are mysteries in the realm of the spirit. I pray that you would pull back the veil that we can see into the realm of the spirit. And begin to see, know, and understand as to what's happening. Lord, we petition you. We ask that you anoint our eyes that we might see, anoint our ears that we might hear. And Lord, help us, Lord, to keep this unruly member in our mouth shut, that we do not talk ourselves out of our, our miracles, that we do not curtail or abort our own destinies. But help us to stay before you. Help us, Lord, to stay broken to be broken and to stay broken. Help us, Lord, not to stumble and fall. Help us to be ever before you, willing, obedient. And even now, even now, Lord, Ishmael do Sira de Sindra Amanin Jared Mira de Basodo. Rudo O Shira de Sindra Amanero de Basandrida. O Shimera de Sira de Sindra Basondo Ushma. O Shimera da Temenaro Tomaro Sondo Shirada. O Re de Sira de Sindra Basondo Ushma. Ishmael de Sandra Omanin Jared Mira de Basandra Basandi. Rudo Oshimera de Sindra Omen in the air to be a Malaga Basora as a Basande. 
Robodele Masande Oshiri de Sindrada. Father, we bind Radasa Maro Dondra Omen in the air to be a Radada Basolo. Rudo Oshiri de Sindra Amanero Tabasondo Oshiri de Arabadada Bosondo. Oshiri de Sindra Amanero da Sandra Ba. Lord, I pray that those, Lord, Ishiri de Sindra Amanero da Sande, that are beginning to understand, Lord, the realms of glory, Radasa Maro Dondo. Ishiri de Sandra Ba. Lord, help the Lord that they can meditate on this word. And that they can chew on this word. And that they can ishmeri this That it might be revelation, Lord, and it might be Ishbaro Tora de Serida. Rodo Monendra Esperanza Oshmeri de Ra. Rodo Oshmara de Sandra Omenendiero. Robert de Besenda Ishmeri de Arabasa. Rodo Oshere de Sindraba. Oshmeri de Sandra Omenendiero de Bia. Robert de Besenda Oshere de Arabasande. Lord, help us to be vigilant. Help us to keep asking questions. Help us, Lord, in our pursuit of you. And Lord, as we continue to, to seek you out, Lord, I know that you will be found. For that's what you're looking for. You're looking for people that are seeking. Lord, help us, Lord, to change this region. For that's what we're here for. We're here to make a difference in people's lives all across the board. So we ask for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Lord, keep us as the apple of the eye, of your eye. Help us with our Samara there to me, double soto. Rudo will share the Sirenara of our Sunday. And Lord, I come against principalities and powers, against rules of darkness, against wicked spirits in high places. I bind every witch, wizard, soothsayer, astrologer. I bind every warlock, red out of my son of my share the sin, red out of my Sunday. I bind those who go to the groves, Lord, and to the high places. Ish Mary, the sin, of the Marasondo. Rodo, O share the sin, of the Sunday. Lord, I take this time, Lord, to pray for my brother Rod Parsley. Ish Mary, the sin, and I send for Omen and Dear to be Sunday. Lord, we issue Rod, I send for Omen and Dear to be Urban Adam of Soul. Is sharing the serenara of the Mara Sundo. Rodo O Shiri the Serenara Manara Basande. Robade the Basanda O Shiri Dana Basande. Father, raise him up, Lord. Heal him, Lord. Radasa Basu Mara Doro. Is Meridera Timero de Basande. Rodo O Shiri the Sendra Amara Doro. Rodo Meadra Omen and Dear to be at Abasande. Satan, you will not have your way. You will not silence that man. Rodo O Shiri the Serenara. Robade the Basanda O Shiri Dana. Rose Shimara de Otto, Ishmira do Siradan of a Sunday, Ishmira Dana of a Sunday. Lord, I pray, Lord, for all Christians, Lord, that are being persecuted around the world, Lord. I don't pray enough for them. Those, Lord, who are in the Middle East, those who are in China. Lord, I pray for them, Lord. I pray, Lord, even the, the, the young man, Lord, that they lied to him and they're holding him away from his family. Oh, sure, the Serenara tomorrow, don't draw me in your to be out. Rodo, oh, sure, the Serenara Basanda. Lord, I, I'm reminded, Lord, of Nora Lamb, how you used her, Lord, and how the authorities in China were so nasty to her for so many years. Lord, I pray that he, he will not be broken. Lord, I pray that you let your spirit wash over him. Let him be reminded, Lord, that there are people who are praying for him. We're praying for a safe return back to America. But Lord, we're also praying, Lord, that you can issue the Serenade by Sunday or Sherrod out of a Sunday. Lord, I ask that you work some miracles out. It's your for Nora Lamb, Lord. Oh sure, the Serenade syndrome and to be out of. Lord, let the captives be confused and confounded. Let the miraculous power of God, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you begin to do things that only you can do. That all those people, Lord, who don't believe will come to the conclusion that Jesus is the Christos, that he is the Christ, and that he serves the Lord God. Ishmael, Dosir, and Ascendra, Omen, and Rana Ishmael, there to me, 
Robert de la Besson de Oshiri de Sibi, Roll Eshmira de Sindraba, Osporada and Sparadora da Sibi, Oshmira de Sira da Sparadodo, Roll them in India de Bia Basande. Father, touch people from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet, Lord. Ishira da Basande, I command sickness, disease, and infirmity in your body to die. I command the life which is in Christ Jesus. That same power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in our mortal bodies. And I speak I speak healing to your body. I speak healing to your mind. I speak healing to your soul. I speak healing to your spirit. Rose Rosomara de Centro Melindio, Roy Esmera da Samara Dodo, Esmera da Sande. And Father, I thank you. I thank you for the manifestation of your spirit. Lord, take us from Esmera de Samara Dodo, Esmera da Sande. Esmera de Sera de Centro Omenindio de Mia, Rodo O Sherry de Sera da Andro Omenindio. Rudo o sherry de seridas ma, e sherry de sendra ma sodo. Father, we give you praise and honor and glory. We give you praise and honor and glory. We give you praise and honor and glory. Father, we give you praise and honor and glory. We give you praise and honor and glory. And Lord, yes, and yes, yes, Lord, all the glory goes to you, Lord. I do not want to touch the glory. All the glory is Shara de Sarado, Oshmer de Rabasundo, Rudo Oshere de Besundromana, Rudo Oshere de Siradaroda, Eshere de Sindromasolo. Lord, I pray that you would visit people in the night season. Speak to them so plain that they'll know that it's you. Make your presence so well known. Oshmer de Sendra Omni Dear to be allowed Sunday. And Father, we give you praise, honor, and glory. Ishiri de Siridandra Omni Dear to be Sunday. Oh, we are thank you, Lord, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Oshiri de Siridandra Omni Dear to be Sunday. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hmm. I just saw somebody hand me a telephone. <laughs> that was interesting. I don't know more about these games than I do. Um, is there a game where somebody hands your telephone? It just looked like a looked like a phone like the phone in in the dining room though. It was a cell phone. I had to, yeah, I had to realize that opened my eyes and realize what I was seeing. Um, I saw this woman and she just was handing me a phone. But that could be somebody who wants prayer. You know, it's a lot of different ways that could be interpreted. Yeah. Yeah. I think what I saw is like, you've been talking about how God is, is about to restore a lot of things. And what I got from that was, there's been certain things, there have been certain answers that you've been waiting to hear. And God's about to use somebody to deliver whatever that is that you're waiting to hear. And it's it's somebody's waiting on our land with that answer, you know, that you it's it's been it's been held up. But now the release of it is that news being delivered to you finally 
and you you've been expecting it. You've been expecting it. Um, wow. Okay. He didn't tell me what it is, but it's been something you've been waiting to hear for the past twenty years. The past twenty years, you've been waiting to hear this, to hear this news, to hear these words. Um. Wow. And on the other end, it's a Caucasian male, about mid-30s. He didn't give me a name. 